What's going on everybody? What are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about a few topics I have lined up. Um, mainly some DIY e-liquid information and uh, um, eh, some advocacy. A little bit of uh, how to overcome the FDA's issues. So let's go ahead and get to it. Come on. What's going on everybody? Big D, Big Rick Vaping back with you here. Today we're going to talk about a few topics I have. I have a few emails this week. Um, people want to know some information. Um, and uh, I'm going to do my best to help out. So first things first, um, I want to talk about, um, what do I want to talk about? Um, I want to talk about DIY liquids. Um, past few videos I've made mention that I had uh, some e-liquid I was working on. That's what I'm vaping on. That's actually what I've got right now. Well, some real tasty stuff. I've gotten into DIY pretty hot and heavy over the past few months. Um, really enjoying it. Kind of enjoying the journey on it. Um, with the uh, FDA deeming regs coming down, it only made sense. Um, and we'll go over why that it makes sense here in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. This is uh, it's actually my son's recipe that I tweaked just a little bit. This is called Besties and Cream. Uh, it's a strawberry peach uh, with a cream finish. It's pretty good stuff. Good flavor. Uh, anyway, I I got some notes. I never take notes. I was told I need to start taking show notes, so here we go. Um, so that covers the DIY liquid. DIY liquid is something I'm probably going to do um, on a more frequent basis. Um, share recipes that I've come up with or that I've tried, um, and uh, all that good stuff. If you guys are into DIY and want to learn a DIY liquid, shoot me an email or uh, leave a message in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. Um, something I might add to the uh, to the format so uh, let me know what you think it's something I'm interested in I figured you guys might be too and if that's the case I want to hear about it so let's go ahead and go on to the next topic uh, that kind of ties in with the DIY stuff um, getting through the regs uh, and, and fear monitoring we've got a lot of people that are old doom and gloom um, and from the business standpoint, it's bad. Uh, the deeming regs are probably going to do away with the majority of the vaping uh, products that we have. I say at the beginning of every video, um, you know, do your part. Support HR 2058. Uh, support the Cole Bishop Amendment. Uh, go to reputable people in the advocacy game. Uh, Grim Green at GrimGreen.com. Um, Ruby Roo. Um, you can go and check out the Vaping Greek. Uh, Dimitri has a podcast. Very informative. I just like No Life Four episodes right in a row. Um, and you can learn um, some real good information from those. Some of those, and I'm not going to say who, um, are a little over the top for my taste. It's doom and gloom. Uh, oh, August the 8th, the uh, vaping world's going to come to an end as we know it. Okay, from the business end, yes, that's true. But what you guys have to understand is that... The FDA is just doing this because the government wants money. You're not going to get certain things through 
because the president's not going to sign it. We're going to need a new president, uh, and in my opinion, Donald Trump's the only guy that's got a business mind. The rest of them are all uh, politics as usual. Um, it's a shot in the dark, but it's the only shot I think we got. Politics set aside, um, stop think for a minute why they're doing this. They're not doing this to pick on the vaping community. They're doing this because they're losing money. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The government does not care one small shit about your health. They don't. Uh, I watched a documentary the other day and heard an interview from a, a, a physician who left the medical industry to go into holistic medicine and he made a very good point. Chemotherapy has been around for a very long time uh, and chemotherapy is very ineffective. Uh, I think it was several years ago I believe he said that they actually did a study uh, and studied uh, uh, over a thousand patients um, from the time they were diagnosed through chemo and all of it they did some without chemo did a whole study on this and basically they found out that chemotherapy uh, doesn't work uh, 82 percent I believe he said or 82 or 85 and I can't remember now uh, but it was a very high number of percentile that was unaffected by chemotherapy. So his question is, why do we use it? If we know it doesn't work, why do we use it? Uh, it's simple. And he he pointed this out, and I've got this from other sources as well, that um, it's, it's money. Uh, chemotherapy treatments is the only um, pharmaceutical treatment that doctors have a big slice of the profit. Um, they get probably 30% of the nine ten, or 10 grand it cost to do a chemotherapy treatment. Uh, so yeah, it's in their best interest. That's, that's a big cash cow for them. Uh, I don't trust doctors as far as I can throw them. Uh, I think they're all crooked, corrupt, and looking for a, a profit. Uh, they're in the business to make money um, and that's that's another that's another show altogether uh, but yeah uh, that being said it's good business for you to be sick because if you're sick you go to the doctor the doctor writes prescriptions and you go to the pharmacy and get it filled and the doctors are making money and big pharma's making money and everybody's fat and happy and you're still sick. Think about it for a minute. Just let it soak in. I'm gonna get a vape. Imagine that. Imagine if you could cure cancer with a series of herbs and minerals. Imagine what that would do to Big Pharma. They'd just about go bankrupt with cancer treatments alone. Um, in Holland, I believe, Holland or Switzerland, I can't remember now. Uh, I believe it was, they have and have had for many years uh, research done showing 15 different herbs and minerals if taken at a, at a spe specified dose for a specified amount of time in combination, cures cancer. That's right. Cures cancer. You heard it right. Cures it. Doesn't make it better. Doesn't send it to remission. It obliterates it. Does away with it. Gone. They have turned that over to Big Pharma and Big Pharma doesn't want to hear about it. They called them crazy. There's no way. It doesn't work. The FDA won't even entertain it. Wonder why. Wrap your head around that for a minute. Guys, if you think the FDA is a good thing, or if you think the pharmaceutical companies are out to help you, 
you're mistaken. Okay? They're not. The FDA and, and Big Pharma and Big Tobacco could give one, two shits about your health. They're in this to make money and tax e-liquid and tax vapor products. They will do. Nothing you can do about it. It's going to happen. Sure as I'm sitting here talking to you right now, it's going to happen. And I hear um, people talk about, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm against any, any tax on e-liquid. Yeah, you might be against it, but it's going to happen. The government knows this is a big upcoming business. They are doing the same thing with vaping that they did with alcohol and prohibition. They are going to make it to where you are so uncomfortable and you're tired of dealing with the black market and you're tired of having to hide behind a corner to vape because God knows you don't want to get caught, right? That they're they're going to do that and then they're going to say okay look it, you know, it's been four years the studies are coming in now that show this might be good how about this we go ahead and lift the prohibition on vaping let's make it legal we'll put our little stamp on it for taxes and you guys go have a nice day most people would be so happy that you wouldn't even care yeah we'll do that and they get their way. They're gonna do it. So you may as well just go ahead and get used to the idea this industry is gonna be taxed. What do we do to survive the regs? Guys, we've been vaping a long time. You know, I watched uh, or listened to a podcast, the uh, uh, Culture of Clouds podcast, Grim Green and Ruby Roo put on, and they were talking about the history of vaping and you know, where it started from, blah, blah, blah. Um, and way back in the day, they were dripping e-liquid on steel wool or mesh, you know, and hooking it to batteries and they're the finding a way. We created this industry out of thin air. All you people really have to do is go back to your roots. Get creative. doesn't do any good... Um, to fight it you know it's gonna happen so basically what you're gonna have to do and it sucks it really does uh, that the person that is going to be affected the most are businesses and the smokers because the smokers aren't gonna want to deal with the hassle that's gonna be coming uh, guys like me we're gonna we're gonna vape. you're not gonna stop me from vaping um, because I've got enough common sense and ingenuity uh, that I, I can be, I can build a device. Um, I've got uh, I've got enough atomizers and parts I can repair and fix what I got to get from now to doomsday. I can make my own Clapton wire. Uh, I can go to Hobby Lobby and get stainless steel wire uh, at any gauge I want all day long. Um, and it's the same, 316L stainless. Um, you know, e-liquid's not a big deal. Make your own. Uh, you're going to be able to get the stuff uh, because it's food uh, food flavorings that's been around forever. All right? And I heard somebody say, um, oh, no, they're going to do away with that. What you're not understanding is a little thing called that uh, predicate date. Let's have a vape. Little thing called the predicate date. 2007. What was around in 2007? Anything 2007 past uh, uh, prior to 2007 is grandfathered in, right? So, with that being said, if it's grandfathered in, uh, were 18650 batteries around in 2006? Yeah. Wire. Was it around in 2006? Yeah. How about um, propylene glycol? Yeah. Vegetable glycerin has been used in baby oil and uh, pharmaceuticals for decades decades 
they were using vegetable glycerin for snake oil back in the day when liniments were used in your hair. Uh, anybody remember uh, the Vitalis hair, hair tonic? The primary ingredient was the vegetable glycerin. Vegetable glycerin is used in chapstick, lipstick, uh, many other products. You know, it's, it's one of those things. They're not going to be able to do away with it. Flavorings. What about flavorings? Flavorings have been used in diabetic uh, food for many, many years. I can remember as a kid, uh, my grandfather getting diabetic candy. And it was flavored with artificial flavor. That's all it really is. Pick up a box of Kool-Aid and look at the flavoring. It's not real. It's artificial. That's all these flavorings are is multi-purpose artificial flavorings. You can take the same flavorings that we make e-liquid out of and make you a batch of gummy bears. All you got to do is add the flavorings to some gelatin and liquefy it let it set up it's not that hard you know it's amazing to me that we can figure out how to make jello shots and get shit faced but we can't think for ourselves and shit i can make my own damn e-liquid you know it just takes a little little practice it's not hard trust me if a poor old dumb truck driver from north florida countryside can mix tasty e-liquid you can I'm telling you it's, it's that simple so we gotta stop the fear mongering diacetyl I see it on threads all the time on reddit in groups on YouTube everywhere oh you gotta get flavorings that are diacetyl and dictone free Guys, we've been ingesting diacetyl for years. Years. There's more diacetyl in a cup of beer than there is this entire bottle of e-liquid. There's 100, actually I think it's 300% more diacetyl in one cigarette than there is a 30 mil unicorn bottle of e-liquid. 30 mils. Come on, man. That whole popcorn lung thing. Guys, stop stop spreading rumors. Popcorn lung happened because people were inhaling diacetyl in a powder form. The powder caked up on their moist lungs on the inside and caused problems. This doesn't cake up on your lungs. It's not a powder. It's already suspended in a liquid. Okay? It's it, it's fine. Really. And it tastes really damn good. I, I, I've got an e-liquid I'm working on. The primary flavoring is butter. <laughs> it's good stuff. It, it's not going to kill you. Alright. So we've ta we talked about uh, DIY liquid for a little bit. We've talked about getting through the regs uh, a little bit. A little bit more about getting through the regs. Guys, we're going to have to get creative here. All right. Uh, you're going to get, go on YouTube. Find some videos on how to build your own mods. There again, they can stop mods from coming in overseas. But they can't stop you from taking a piece of copper pipe drilling it out, putting threads on the end of it, making a switch, and putting a battery in it. That's just American ingenuity or human ingenuity, okay, or whatever you want to call it. That's using your head. This mod right here is very, very simple. If you don't believe me, I've done a review on it. Go look at the review. There's like uh, six parts, including the tube. You know, the, the button is uh, one, two, four-piece assembly. It's a housing, a screw, 
an insulator, and a spring. And a button. That's it. Wire. Well, you know, you can get wire, like I said, from Hobby Lobby or any good craft store. It's the same wire. There's nothing special. Shit, four years ago, we were using welding wire. Some people are still using G-plat wire. And I used to be a certified welder. G-plat is nothing in the world but welding wire. That's all it is. Be careful when you get wire and make sure it's pure. Make sure it doesn't have flux in it. And you can use welding wire to bait. It's not that hard. Um... batteries. They're not going to stop making batteries. They use batteries for everything. They're not going to stop making LiPos. They use, them in, they use them in laptops, cell phones, Bluetooth equipment. Your GPS probably has um, a LiPo in it. They're everywhere. They're not going to start making rechargeable batteries like these because they're everywhere. They're used in self or uh, camera equipment, uh, remote controlled cars. They're all over the place. You can find all of these electrical components online, order them separately, and assemble them in your living room. You got to get creative, okay? Um, let's say you've got this velocity, all right? The only thing that's going to go bad on that velocity is maybe the insulator, um, in which case you can probably find them in China. I'm sure that you can find the insulators, parts, because the parts, they can't say, oh, no, you can't, you can't order that. Yeah, I can't order a piece of Delrin, really. There's some things that they can't regulate, and they're not going to go after the little guy anyway. They're going to go after the big businesses. It's all about breaking up the monopoly. It's too hard for the FDA to regulate all these businesses because there are mom and pop vape shops popping up all over this country. It's too difficult. So what they have to do is they have to thin the herd. They have to get a lot of these little bitty shops to close down. So all there is are the bigger companies and then they'll pass their regulations and their taxes and 15 or 20 companies will be all there is. The price will be high because of supply and demand, but it's going to be easier for them to tax it. That's all they're doing with these regulations. They're making it where they're setting the groundwork so that whenever they get ready to tax it, they've got just a handful of people to go to to collect taxes instead of 500,000 shops all over the country. That's all they're doing. They're making it easier on them further down the road. It's all about a money grab. So, DIY e-liquid. The next video I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to make a DIY e-liquid. Uh, and I promise you it's easy. Um, the basic things you're going to need is a scale or uh, syringes. A lot of people like using syringes. I like a scale. I've done a lot of research, um, and liquid has a weight. All liquid has a weight, and weight is a better form or method to measure with because weight doesn't change. Viscosity can change. Volume can change with the temperature. The colder it is, the thicker liquid gets. The warmer it is, the thinner it gets. Temperature plays a part, weather conditions play a part, altitude plays a part. The only thing that doesn't change is the weight. So I recommend everybody that does DIY liquid get a scale. You can go to any head shop, uh, you can get them online, go to your local tobacco supply shop that sells bongs and shit. Uh, that's where I bought mine. Uh, and you can get pick them up for anywhere between starting at 35 bucks and up. You don't need a very high-end one. All you really need is one that measures into the 100th of a gram. That is 0.00. .00. 
Alright, if it has the two decimal places behind the, Z, the first number, you're good. Get that one. Don't get one from Harbor Freight like I did first time. Uh, the ones they have don't measure in the one hundredth of a gram. They only measure in the tenth, a zero point zero. That's not minute enough. You need something that's going to go down to zero point zero zero. And the reason is this: some of the ingredients that you add, you only add two or three drops, and you're going to do that by weight. Um, and you need something that's going to go down to uh, like one of your weight may be 0 0.15 or 0 0.0 T or 0 0.08 uh, you need that that you need that more minute scale they're cheap pick them up all over the place they're compact they're no bigger than your cell phone you know it's, it's a no-brainer um, vegetable glycerin uh, there again you can pick that up at your local Walmart if you're if you're tight. Um, it's probably not as pure, although it is pharmaceutical grade. Uh, to know something is pharmaceutical grade, look for USP. USP is is the abbreviation for pharma pharmaceutical grade suspension. So USP is pharmaceutical grade. To what depth? I don't know. Uh, but it's still safe to make if you need to. Um, I use Wizard Labs. Uh, they're here in, in Florida. They're out of Orlando. And only because I live in Florida, I don't want heat damaging uh, my nicotine. Uh, so I order most of my nicotine from them. Uh, and I order everything else, VG, PG, all my flavorings. I, I like, I'm a one-stop shop type of guy. I get all my stuff from Bull City Vapor. Uh, you can order directly from the company. Um, perfumers are the, the uh, Flavor Apprentice, uh, Capella, Flavor Art, uh, some of those. Um, go check out a DIY channel. Uh, I recommend Fresh 03. Has got a really good one. Or Wayne over at DIY or Die, uh, check his out. Um, find a forum on Reddit and uh, just do a little do a little reading. Um, you can find good recipes. I'll post one here for um, a blueberry mojito that I, I love it. Um, where is my blueberry? There it is. Um, it's delicious, babe. sweet got some lime in there a good rich blueberry flavor it's 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 a blueberry mojito in a vape i'm telling you it's good stuff um dimitri has a fla favorite e-liquid and you probably heard him talk about mentholated peach green tea i made a mentholated peach green tea Minty, cool, refreshing, peach in there, it's good stuff. You can make all these e-liquids right there in your, in your home office, at your kitchen table. It's not that hard. You do not need a ISO 7, ISO 9 lab to do this. Um, you know, you, you want your work area to be clean. You don't want cockroaches running all over everything, rats dancing on your computer screen. You don't want filth, you know, because you are going to vape this. Um, but, you know, for most of us, have pretty clean houses. Do it at your kitchen table where you feed your family. Uh, you know that's clean, right? I would hope so. I would hope you don't feed your kids on a filthy table with maggots all over it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, you're going to need a scale. You're going to need your base ingredients, your PG and your VG, and you're going to need some flavorings. You're also going to need your nicotine. Uh, not all nicotine is the same. Uh, nicotine is varied by strength 
and the base dilutant that it's put into. You never get 100% nicotine uh, because it's nicotine is poisonous. Uh, it can leach into your blood via your skin um, and all that stuff. It's, it's not good to get on you. Always wear gloves. I go to Harbor Freight, pick up Mechanics Latex gloves. They're really strong. Pick them up, buy the box for like four bucks a box. It's cheap. Uh, some basic ingredients. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, leave a message down in the comments. I'll be glad to help you out through it. Um, I'm going to post a recipe down in the description for that blueberry mojito. If you wanted to give that a shot, it's really easy. It's just a couple ingredients. Uh, just go buy the ingredients and follow the recipe. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, uh, shoot me a message and I'll explain it. Uh, go to eliquidrecipes.com. I think it's e-liquid-recipes.com. It's a mouthful. Uh, look up eLiquid Recipes and it'll pop up in Google very easily. Uh, and they have a built-in calculator. All you do is say, oh, okay, I need a blueberry, 4%. Type it in. I need this. Okay, type it in. Uh, put your uh, base dilutants in. Uh, strength of nicotine. I use 100 milliliters or milligrams per milliliter. Uh, it's pretty strong. You can get the weaker solutions. Uh, and you need one syringe to draw up your nicotine. It's the only syringe you need. You can go to most pharmacies, tell them you're giving your baby some medicine, and they'll give you one for free. Um, a blunt tip needle makes things easy. Pick them up at most vape shops for cheap. Um, it's not that hard. Um, so that's what we got there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've talked about the recipe, uh, and we've talked about the fear mongering. Gotta stop all the fear mongering, man. It's not, it's not needed. Uh, vaping is not coming to an end uh, for the end user. Uh, for the consumer like you and me, we're going to be able to vape. You just got to get creative. You may have to make your own e-liquid because a lot of e-liquids go to e-liquid e companies are going to shut down. Um, don't go back to smoking. Uh, if you value your life, you want to be around your kids, um, it's time to put up or shut up. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's not going to be as easy as uh, getting off work and running by your local brick and mortar, picking up two 30 mil bottles of e-liquid for the week and running home. No. You know, it's going to take a little bit of learning. It's going to take a little bit of effort. Uh, but anything worthwhile is usually worth it. So think about that for a minute. Stop believing all the fear-mongering tactics. Uh, if you're spreading fear-mongering tactics, stop it. Um, DIY is going to be around. Everything in it is you can, you, you'll be able to get it. Nicotine might be a little tough to get, but uh, Wayne at DIY or Die has already tested some nicotine from China, and they are, they've already said, screw the FDA. If you want it, we'll ship it to you. Um, it's going to be available. You're going to be able to get it. Uh, you just might be a little creative where you get it from. That being said, have a nice night, guys. I guess I've reached the uh, maximum capacity of my phone. Uh, I had to move some stuff over to memory card real quick. Uh, yeah, it's a thing. Ran out of room, camera stopped, what the hell ever. Anyway, guys, that's all I got time for today. I got to get going. You guys be careful out there. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't forget, uh, I'm always around. Uh, shoot me an email or uh, leave a message in the description. I promise I'll get back to you. Uh, it might take a day or two. Uh, and it may not so it just depends but i will get back to you i, I answer everything um yeah guys if you like the video uh, you're interested in some stuff hit subscribe uh, and we're going to make it all through all this nonsense together right um 
Alright guys, be careful out there. Do what you do. Be safe. It's pissing rain like crazy right now, so I'm gonna have to get down the road. Guys be careful out there. Yeah, vape on guys.